Good morning. Welcome to Morning Psalms and Prayer. Here we are once again. We're starting off with a different set of prayers again. We're back to Hughes Oliphant Old's Leading in Prayer Workbook and his Prayers for Illumination. The one for today is based upon Nehemiah 8.6. Let us pray. Blessed you are, Lord, great God. Blessed you are, eternal God, in times past and yet today. You have spoken in the past and your people have been guided through all kinds of wildernesses and supported in all kinds of exiles and tribulations. Speak to us today in the midst of our own peculiar confusions. Speak to us through your law and give us a sense of order and direction. Speak to us through your gospel. Transform us by your grace. Renew us in hope. For yours is the future, even more than the past. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Okay, we are in Psalm 68 again today. We're going to start with verse 19, and then I believe we'll be reading through verse 35. Hear the word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong deliverances from death. But God will strike the heads of his enemies, the hairy crown of him who walks in his guilty ways. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea that you may strike your feet in their blood, that the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from the foe. Your procession is seen, O God, the procession of my God, my King, into the sanctuary, the singers in front, the musicians last, between them virgins playing tambourines. Bless God in the great congregation, the Lord, O you who are Israel's fountain. There is Benjamin, the least of them, in the lead, the princes of Judah in their throng, the princes of Zebulun, the princes of Naphtali. Summon your power, O God, the power, O God, by which you have worked for us, because of your temple at Jerusalem. Kings shall bear gifts to you. Rebuke the beasts that dwell among the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the peoples. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Nobles shall come from Egypt. Cush shall hasten to stretch out her hands to God. O kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord, to him who rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. Behold, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God from his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. All right, we land here in another psalm that is an imprecatory psalm. And just to be clear of what an imprecatory psalm is, is essentially it's a prayer of curse or basically a wishing of destruction upon the enemies of the psalmist. And as I said, when we came to one of these imprecatory psalms previously, these can be a bit uncomfortable for us, right? Because we like the praise the Lord, let everything in his breath praise the Lord type of psalm. But when we come to these, uh, things like, I didn't highlight it here, but verse 23, that you may strike your feet in their blood, that the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from the foe. I'm not very comfortable with reading that. I don't want to imagine that. But we have to remember that these psalms are from a different time when war was something, when war is always ugly, but it meant something different. There was going to be a very little chance of a peace treaty. Uh, if they did not defeat their enemies, their enemies weren't going to come in and uh, have a nice meal with them and, and you know, sit down and play cards and everything was going to be peaceful. That wasn't what was going to happen. It was, it was they were going to have to defeat the enemies of God. And he was going to have to deliver them or they were going to be ultimately destroyed. And so they trusted in God to be their one. And so they, they believed, they believed so much that God would protect them that they called down these curses upon the enemies of God. And as I've said before, when we were in one of these imprecatory Psalms, we have to remember that the viewpoint of the psalmist here is that these enemies are not just their enemies, but they're enemies of God. They are going up against his holiness. They are trying to overthrow the anointed one of God who sits on the throne in Israel. And so it's important that we remember that as we come to these difficult parts of the Psalms. But for us today, I want to focus on some other stuff, so maybe a little bit more of the positive, positive elements here in this Psalm. And so specifically, if you're watching on video, you can see I've highlighted Verse 20, our God is a God of salvation, and to God the Lord belongs deliverances from death. See what they believe is going to happen to them if they lose to the enemies. Yes, 
this is an understanding that if they do not defeat their enemies, enemies, death is coming to them. And so they call out to God because they know that he is the God of their salvation. And that is where their deliverance is going to come from. Now for us, on the other side of the story of redemption, on the other side of the cross and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus, this has a meaning for us too. Because we understand that our God is a God of salvation and he delivers us from death. Now, it's not from our enemies that will come in. It's not guaranteeing that we won't ever die. We know that. But it delivers us from the consequences of death. It saves us from hell. It saves us from having to worry about what eternity means for us. Our deliverance is an assurance that because Christ has united himself to us in his life, death, resurrection, ascension, that we will have eternal life. And so we trust in that, and we know God not as simply a God who's out there uh, moving the chess pieces around in a battle and maybe helping us win or not. Uh, we know that God is a God of salvation, just as the ancient Israelites did. But for us, we're looking to an eternal salvation. We're looking to being saved from the eternal consequences of death. And as we come down to the final verse, Verse 35, awesome is God from his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. And that's where we land today. Awesome is God from his sanctuary. He is our God. He's not just the God of Israel anymore. Anyone who has been given the gift of faith and believes and trusts in Christ is now the person, the people who are the people of God. And so he gives power and strength to us. Now, for the psalmist, he was hoping for power and strength to defeat an army that was coming up against them. But as we think about this, we have power and strength from God. When the things in our lives that are difficult come up against us, we have power and strength from God. He is the one who gives power and strength to his people, and he does that through the Holy Spirit. We have a trust and a certain belief that the Holy Spirit will work in us, and we're hearing the word. Today, we're hearing the word and we trust that God uses those means to make us holy. And so we praise him for this. We say, blessed be God for doing this for us. And so may our day today be a day of praise. That we understand that God is awesome in his sanctuary. But at the same time, while he is exalted above everything else, he comes to us through his word and spirit. And so we are a blessed people. And so may we give praises of blessing to God, that we might glorify him in all that we do. May our lives be a living sacrifice, as Paul says in Romans 12. May our lives be a living sacrifice that show that we trust that God has given us his power and his strength. And we are his people, so may we do that today. Let us go to prayer. Loving God, we are so blessed for you daily bear us up. You are the God of our salvation, and in Christ, you deliver us from death. And we praise and thank you, O God, for this good news, and we pray that you would give us great joy in this truth today. As the weekend approaches, we pray that you would work in us to produce holiness, that we might bring honor and glory to your holy name. Through your word and spirit, convict us of areas of sinfulness in our lives, and strengthen us to resist temptation and live as you desire us to live. Root us in your gospel so that when we fail and fall into sin, we might repent and be assured of the forgiveness that we have in Jesus. Grant us a desire for holiness and lead us in paths of righteousness. Today we pray that you would summon your power, O God, that power which you have worked for us, that we might sing praises to the Lord. For you are the one who gives power and strength to your people. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Have yourself a very good Friday, and I hope you have a blessed weekend. Take care.